everybody. We are out here this morning. Guys, we've been through one heck of a drought here. And when it's that hot and that dry, I don't come out and fool with anything. Uh, the grass and the weeds pretty much during those times really do take a hold. And what I'm doing is we had a... <laughs> We didn't hardly have any rain. We had like three-eighths of an inch of rain. But it's better than what nothing. I can show you. If I come here and I dig down, see that? We're, we're dry. See that right there? I'm dry. Right down in there. It's just powder. So the three-eighths of an inch was a blessing, but it didn't do a lot down deep. But I want to get the grass off of the tops of all this. Um, now right next to the chicken pen here, I'm probably not going to worry. That'll probably just be weed-eated. I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to pull the vines up and lay them up in the rows. And then I'll just take the weed-eater and run down through here and weed-eat the edge of that off. Because it's really not going to do me any good to hoe it. But out in the garden here, I'm going to try to keep working my way over here. The chamber bitters are so bad. I mean, they're coming up here like crazy. But I can run the hoe right under the edge of the surface and get rid of them and lay the vines back up in the rows. These chamber bitters are everywhere. I mean, there are about a thousands and thousands here. And all I can do is take the hoe and just go along and cut them off under the surface. And I'm not going to get them all the first time around. There's not any need me even freaking out trying to. Chickens will love the grass when I throw it over there. But I just go through and I just kind of like clean it up a little bit. Because if we can ever get it where the sweet potato vines start growing, because they've been sitting here in this drought, not really doing a whole lot. They're not dying, but they're not really growing either. I'm just trying to just cut this stuff off right under the surface. And then train our vines. It's called training them. Now I rake this stuff up a little bit in a pile. Chickens love it. And rather than get overwhelmed with everything, I usually just jump back across because it looks like you've not really done anything. I'll jump across and take these a little bit out. Here and there. That way it keeps you from getting so overwhelmed. It looks like you're not making any progress. You can turn around and you look back behind yourself and you see progress. Because I may not, I won't get the whole patch probably today because the heat will probably get to be too bad. Plus, I get tired. <laughs> Another thing. But I will get a section of it done here at a time. This is very important while these sweet potatoes is at this stage, is to get as many weeds knocked down as you can. Because once they go to vining good, now that we've got a little bit of moisture, they will actually take off and they'll cover up a lot of this stuff and overpower it eventually. You see how quickly I've done like a 10 or 12 foot section here. I've got two rows already done 10 or 12 foot. Rather than work my way down one long row, I can continue to just work my way as I go. And ladies, don't worry about your vines. You're not going to hurt them. They'll, they'll be just fine. There is a there is a process that um, the old people used. Now I don't do it so much because I have plenty of uh, sweet potato slips. But back in the day, when they had big fields that they wanted to plant, once these vines got rooted out in the rows out here, or you could come along here. I'll give you a for instance. You can take like like this right here. You can 
you can cut them off and pull these off of here. But you need to make sure it's wet when you do that. And I can come over here. See, I've got a couple missing right here where they just didn't take. I'll take my hoe and clean it up a little bit because i got to do it anyway. And you can take and you can punch two holes in the ground. You can actually take these, stick them down in the ground. Come out here and keep them watered and you grow more sweet potatoes. The old people did that when they had large fields and they didn't have enough draws to actually uh, uh, plant the whole field. And the one thing, when I'm when you're using a hoe out here and it's wet like this, the dirt will stick to it and it just gets, it gets heavy, makes it hard to handle, and it doesn't hoe as well. So I, I usually keep my knife with me and do that. Kind of helps take some of the weight off of your arm. It doesn't hurt because you can take some dirt up like this and you can lay it on top of your vines up here where you lay them back in a the row. They'll actually root right there and it'll help make your vine a lot more stable uh, than what it is. And sometimes you get a vine that won't lay in the row or anything like that. And you can do that with it also to kind of help out a little bit getting it rooting good. Because you want to keep your vines on top of the rows as much as possible so that uh, you go ahead and get the top of that row covered up. Because technically, I could come back once I lay all the vines up in the tops of this. I could take my Cub tractor and I could come back with the sweeps on the back of it and I can plow these middles out once I lay all the vines up on top of the rows. And that, and, and I may do that. Uh, it just, it just depends on what it looks like when I get through with it. And after the hot sun hits it today, I'll kind of see about how much, uh, how much of this in the middles die. Because if I look back like tomorrow morning and there's a bunch of it still trying to pop up, then I'll put the sweeps on the cub and I'll just come through here and I'll sweep the middles out. Go ahead and get that taken care of. And also, I don't plant all of my sweet potatoes all at once. I have like three patches of sweet potatoes. They're all in different stages so that um, we don't have to harvest all at one time. And guys, too, if you're interested in growing sweet potatoes, I have a, uh, we call it a manual. I don't actually call it a book. I call it a manual that I've wrote on our Etsy store. It tells you all about how we grow our sweet potatoes, all the processes of doing it, and everything. It makes it really simple to grow them. You, uh, it's not rocket science. And they really, really do really wonderful. For those of you who uh, grow in containers, you don't have to grow out here in the fields. Uh, you can grow them in containers. They'll do just as good if you'll keep them watered. And, um, don't over fertilize them. Now, that's the one thing about sweet potatoes. Sweet potato is a root crop. Root crops need more phosphorus than they do anything else. Make sure your nitrogen is not, uh, not too high because if your nitrogen is too high, You'll end up with all vines and no sweet potatoes. Guys, we've been growing sweet potatoes for years. This is not uh, not nothing new for us. Uh, some years are better than other years. A lot of it has to do with rainfall, you know, how the weather is, if it's too dry, if it's, uh, if it's too wet. It can be, too wet can be just as bad as too dry. And i tell you what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll take you along on that journey and show you uh, a little bit of some of our past harvests and some of our past sweet potato patches and stuff like that and show you some of the end results of um, 
of a successful harvest and maybe some of the results of years that were not so good. So let's go check out some of the other patches we got and we'll kind of show you what we're talking about with them being in different stages. I tell you what, the Cub Tractor is such a blessing to us. You know, I just washed this over yonder. Look at that. Look at that. The powder. That fast, just running it over here. It's uh, it's just that fast. That and it rained yesterday. That's a crazy thing. Look at that. Pure dust. Guys, this is two other rows we have over here that's of a, 
of a different age. I come through here this morning with a hoe and cut everything off of it. I'm not going to plow the middles of it right now because it really isn't really that bad. Uh, I got these two little rows right here over by the barn. We just put them in different stages in different places. Guys, we had a little bit of wind come through yesterday. We got a couple of them here that, uh, you know, this one will have to come out. It, uh, it broke it off down to ground. I'll have to take it out of there, feed it to the cows. But, I mean, look at the ears already forming on this. Our ears are already starting to form up real good here. It's looking really nice. And one here, up in here. I mean, these are doing really good. Two of them, one coming out right under the other. Now, here's a really nice one right there. Another one coming out right here. They're doing good. And the guys, I'm over six feet tall. And I can... I mean, you look way up yonder. Some of them is over 14 feet tall way up yonder. I mean, it's, it's amazing uh, that the wind didn't blow it down. Now, we got a couple in here like this one here. This one will have to come out. This one here, there's no need leaving this one. See, it broke off right there. You know, to get it out of here. And guys, one thing I'll tell you, the drought has done to the leaves. Here's another one here. Uh, look, at, look at the leaves on it here. See all this dead? It's been so hot and so dry we had no rain for over a month and uh, 105 degree heat index temperatures every day. The corn barely made it. I mean, literally. If I hadn't spaced it out like I did, uh, we would, it wouldn't have made it. it. I did come in and uh, I did put my water hose on the ends of the rows. We have a rain catchment system over here. I, uh, I let that completely empty out in here, running it down the rows. I think I did that three days in a row. And plus, I even took the, the other water and ran it over here just to try to salvage it uh, from losing it. And we had a couple here. You know, I think I showed you all another video. This one here I had to cut the top out of. But the ears were still on it, and there's enough tassels above it to pollinate it. So I went ahead and took it, you know, the top out of it. I mean, it just, it was bad. And, and this week alone, we have way over a hundred they said triple digits coming again for seven more days go so guys we're not out of the woods yet uh, we could still potentially not have as good a harvest as we need and we're just praying to the good lord above that we get some uh you know maybe an afternoon shower or something to without any bad winds or anything because what happens when you see the corn leaning over all like this what happens is this corn, it takes a lot of moisture in that corn to keep that corn stiff and rigid. And when it's that hot and the leaves are starting to roll up on it, like the, these rolled up quite a few times, what happens is there's no moisture left in this stalk and this stalk is not rigid anymore. It becomes soft and it begins to just lean over from, the, from being so tall and the top being heavy. It just leans over. And when that happens, it takes a good bit of moisture and some good sun in the right ratio in order to pull it back up and stand it back up. So it's a it's a really a touch and go situation when it's in this time of the year. Now I want to show you some of the roots we was talking about on these. We've got these brace roots coming out way up here and them things are so sticky and I mean they are really trying to reach for some moisture. We've got several of them in here. All just reaching down for moisture, helping to brace this corn off. That's one of the things I bred into it. I think that it's, it's going to be a real big benefit for it. It helps out a lot with it. And you can see them everywhere on the corn. They come out, they'll come out another foot higher up on it. This one's busting right there. Yep. We have quite a few of them that the wind blew over on top of our uh, trans beans here that uh you know probably we got to pick tomorrow but we'll probably have to just pick from this side and reach through and hopefully the sun will try to pull them back up because believe it or not these things are just now starting to load up with blooms we went through such a long drought period we had no rain here uh, we made a few good harvests on them but and i almost pulled them up i'm not gonna lie to you but i told Wanda, i said it's not hurting anything we'll just leave them 
And guys, now they're coming back blooming. Looks like they're going to put a second crop on. Guys, we're in the uh, Remington uh, greenhouse here. And guys, look, I want you to look. This is my still sweet potatoes coming up in here. I have planted hundreds, literally hundreds of draws from this tub of these red ones here. And these are the white ones here. Um, they're still putting on slips up here. I mean, I've done put out all I need to put out and look at. Some of them's actually running long in here. All right, guys, this is our other patch of sweet potatoes here. This is the first one we planted. It's coming along pretty good. I got it, uh, I took the cub and cleaned the centers out on it before they started running. And they are beginning to do fantastic. They're covering up the rows like they're supposed to. Now, there's a few little pieces of grass here and there. You'll see them in here. A little crab grass sticking up in here. A couple little weeds, but we can go through here now and pull up a couple of the weeds out of it. And pretty much the potatoes are going to cover it all up. They're doing really good. Now, part of these are red, part of them's white. We're just hoping for a really good harvest out of all of it. All right, guys, this is the first row that I planted. These are the white sweet potatoes here. They have already started blooming. I mean, they are really kicking it now. They're making taters is what they say when you see them blooming. They're making taters. And I noticed yesterday before the rain, the ground was cracking up everywhere around them. So that means that they're starting to uh, put taters on. And I mean, I'm looking forward to a harvest now that's our uh and even since the rain look at how the ends are starting to stick up on them since it rained yesterday they got some moisture uh, now i did run water down the middle of these rows two days in a row because they got where the sweet potatoes are starting to droop just a little bit so i did come in and run water down the middle of the rows for those two days and it really perked them up and i think that they're going to kick in now and they're actually going to start making really good potatoes Here's what I was talking about right here. See how the ground is starting to crack right there? When you see that ground cracking like that, they're starting to make taters underneath there. Now, these old chamber bitters here, I'll, I'll come out here one of these days when I get caught up, and I'll sit here, and I'll just go through here and pull these things out because it ain't nothing to pull them out. It's just they, about a thousands in there. I'll chuck them over the fence where the cows are because the cows actually eat them. The amazing thing is... Uh, when the neighbor started building the pond right next door to me here, I, I saw deer tracks all in the road out here. And I was like, oh my word, they're going to eat my sweet potatoes. But you know, we put the bone sauce out last year on these fence posts through here. The deer never crossed the fence and came in here like they did last year. I, I don't know if it's still the bone sauce. is still relevant, you know, anymore. Uh... But the thing about it is, I went ahead and got a new batch from Mr. Billy over at Permapasture Farms, just in case we start seeing something here. We've had no coons, uh, no possums messing with anything, uh, no foxes. We've had no deer. We've had none of these creatures back in none of our gardens. And guys, I'm gonna tell you what, I monitor them daily and I am blessed. And all I can attribute it to Every year prior to that, we've always been tore up by wild animals. And the only thing I can attribute it to is the bone sauce has worked. I mean, uh, that's all I can say. I don't know anything different to say. I mean, we it's the first year that we've not had it. And last year, we put the bone sauce out. So uh, take it for what you want. I'm a believer now. Now, I do have a new batch. If I see something starting to happen, I will put it out. Because last year, it worked like a charm. So go check out Mr. Billy over at Permapasture Farms. Uh, he sells his stuff over there. He makes it himself. He's got his own special, how do you say that? His own special recipe for it. And, and it's working. So go check him out, guys. And thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Okay, guys, a lot of people have asked me, Danny, <clears throat> how do I know when my sweet potatoes are ready to dig? One is the vines will actually start dying back. 
Secondly, when you dig one of them up, if you take your finger and you rub on it like this, if you can't rub that skin off, that's another sign that your potato is ready to dig. If you dig it up and you start rubbing like this and the skin comes off of it, it's not ready to dig. So test your potatoes. These are plenty ready. The skin's good and tough on them, you can see. Not coming off. So these potatoes, look at this. That's a nice sweet potato. Our red sweet potatoes that was beside them here. These were supposed to go all the way to the middle of October, but with the intense heat that we've been having, I've got this sneaky suspicion that these have been growing more than we thought. And I really want to just take a opportunity and I want to check a plant. Now these are about 65 days right now, if I'm not mistaken, um, maybe 70. And we're, we're trying to determine, should we go ahead and dig them? Or should we wait? So I'm going to take and I'm going to sacrifice one plant to see what we get underneath this plant to see if this intense radiational type heat we're having has anything to do with the number of days to the harvest of the sweet potatoes. So you all will see this with me as we do it. I'm just I just randomly picked one here in the garden. As you see, they're still blooming. There's blooms on them. So usually that's a sign they're still making potatoes. And they're still growing, but um, we're gonna just dig one and see. I'm gonna just take and I'm just gonna take and whew, the ground's hard. I know that. I'm gonna start on the outside edge here and kind of work myself in and get rid of these old chamber bitters right here. Pull them up out of there. We've got them things as a curse here now. Never had them before. I'm gonna just kind of start on the outside edge, work my way deep up under this plant. And we got one this size. I mean, not bad, but uh, it can be canned, that's for sure. And, oh, look at this one. Now this is, oh, that's really what we're after right there. I think it's time to dig sweet potatoes. Ooh, look at that. And look, look at this. this. We ain't waiting. Look at that. Now something has. I think you just broke that I off. I might have broke it. Yeah, that's just fresh. That's been broke off. But you can see where. They're starting to split. The wood lice is, uh, they're splitting and, they're, you know, they're starting to, insects in the soil starting to get to them. But this is, this is what we got. Now, I don't know if there's actually any more up under here or not. But I don't think we need to wait. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, I don't see any more. But that's what we got here. Now, to me, that's not bad. No, that's some good... That's some good potatoes right there. Um, so, what you say? We just be digging sweet potatoes the whole fields, all I, of them. I think that the intense heat from the sun, guys. This is a field, and we got another field down here that we yeah. know's ready, and another field down below it. I think um, I think that the intense heat has played a part uh, in this because you look. I mean, these are still these are still putting on blooms. These things are not through growing. I mean, they're 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 still going. The only thing that bothers me is with all this tropical weather we got coming in here this weekend and all the rain. Will they rot, or will they start sprouting because it's been so dry for so long? Uh, I don't know. We may we may dig a few plants just to see because this is just a random plant I just picked in the middle of the field out here. And I think I'm going to probably try a couple more plants just to see if it's consistent. If it's consistent, then I think we should probably focus on the rest of the week digging them. If not, then we'll leave them and uh, we'll just let them go till after all the weather's over with. So, Whoa. Okay, we're going to push up on it and see what we got here. Look Good at this. Good Lord. Oh, insects, look. Huh? Flip. The holes. Oh, we got, well, that's ants. Yes. These old imported fire ants. Uh, but look at this, guys. Look at that. I'd say they're ready. <laughs> I'd say we need to uh, start focusing, because that's good eating potatoes there. Perfect. Perfect And eating. the ants are starting to get them. The so ants we are get starting them. to get them, because the ground is so dry, the ants are looking for some moisture. Uh, 
and they're finding it in the potatoes. I see there's no moisture. There's no moisture at all. This is just pure powder. I mean, you look at it, it's just powder. So, I mean, my fork picks up through it. I was going to check around just to see if it might, we might have missed one on the edge or something. Okay, guys, we came down to our other sweet potato patch here. The grass has took it over predominantly. The plants are dying because of the heat. And it's still, you know, it's just powder here. Y'all see the powder? It's just dry. But this is what we're finding, what I was telling you about. You see this here? Look at this. As dry as it is, the potatoes are just rotting in the ground. So we've got to get in here, even in this heat. They're, they're rotting. We dug a few right here. Um, I hit one good one here with the potato fork and stuck a hole through it. Uh, broke it off. But it was uh, it was a good potato. And we got a few more, and they're sticking around here in different places. You know, this to us is about the best eating size potatoes. We don't want them. We're not really interested in the big old giant ones because they're too hard to cut up. They're usually stringy. Uh, this is the size... We really like to eat right here. We are in our sweet potato patch. We've had tons and tons of rain. Uh, the weeds just took over. Uh, we have decided it's like 160 something days now. We're pulling the weeds to feed to the turkeys and the chickens. The Florida pusley. The Florida pusley. The uh, sweet potato vines will go to the pigs. And then we'll, of course, we'll be keeping the sweet potatoes ourselves. But we're going to try to see if what we can get done here this morning before the sun gets up and gets too hot. Uh, one thing we noticed, we stuck our sweet potato vines, I think, too deep in the ground. And our sweet potatoes are extremely deep. And that, we're wondering if that wasn't part of our problem this year with uh, being able to grow them like we normally do. Because normally we have them up on high mounds. And this year, because of the weather, we weren't able to do that. This dirt, it's been raining, raining, raining. And the ground is still dry up under here. It's amazing to me how dry it is. Out here in our potato field, look at this guys. This is how far tree roots will grow. The trees. the trees are probably 50 to 75 feet over yonder. And we still got oak roots out here in our garden. Perfect eating size potatoes right there. They're not too big, not too little. Perfect. We just got through uh, going through our last sweet potato patch on the hill over there. We planted about a quarter of an acre. Had roughly around 600 sweet potato draws planted over there. And our thinking was if we got one pound per draw, at least we'd get 600 pounds of potatoes. Well guys, um, that didn't happen. The weather changed on us. Um, it started raining just relentlessly for weeks on end. The grass came up in the potato patch. We tried to get it out, but it was just too much. The ground was wet. We couldn't put a tractor in there and plow it. So what happened was we ended up with the grass being about waist deep, which is about three foot deep or a little deeper than that. And it just took over the whole field. And we knew once that happened, we really just have to wait until the end just to see if we got anything. But well, Wanda and I just finished this morning digging and what you see sitting right here beside me is 75 pounds of potatoes out of a quarter of an acre. Now there's some reasons what happened here. Um, first was the weather. It was so rainy 
that up underneath that grass and the dirt, the ground never dried out. And lots of what we would dig, we would find big old potatoes, but when you would touch them, your fingers would just mush into them because they were rotten. They completely rotted. And then as I was going with through the grass, and I had to take the bucket to dig these things. We, there, you couldn't do it by hand. But I'd just take the bucket and go down one of the rows and scoop up about four foot a row and back up and just scatter it all over the ground and dig the potatoes out of all the grass and the dirt and stuff. And what we were finding was rats. Because the grass was so deep, the rats had moved in. Now we have some signs of some things here I want to talk about. Uh, First off, we thought we were breaking a lot of potatoes off because I was like, man, I'm doing so much damage with my bucket because we'd find pieces of potatoes. But when we got to looking like a potato like this, we thought, well, we're breaking them off. No, they've been eaten off by the rats. Even, look at this one here. <coughs> we were finding them with slips growing on them. And I was like, what in the world? And I got to looking right here. The whole end of the sweet potato has been eaten off by rats and it was cut loose from the mother plant. So it done what it does naturally. It's a potato and it starts putting out slips. That's how you get slips from potatoes to plant. So we begin to find that. And not only that, we find, here's another one here. This is fresh sign. This one was just eaten. And because there was so much water, you see these big old cracks in the potatoes? These are just like uh, tomatoes or anything else when it's been dry. And then all of a sudden it just starts raining. These potatoes started growing so fast, they started splitting, busting up all on the sides. I mean, they just look horrendous. Now they're still good, but then we would find one like this one here. You see that? Another one, the rats would just eat the top completely out of it. They, now, the potato's still good. We'll just have to cut that part off. But that's what we begin to find. And I had some here, uh, one like this one here, but we have what's called wood lice here. It's, it's, it's just an insect that's in the soil that mainly feeds on wood products. But sweet potatoes so closely resemble a piece of wood that these lice in the ground, these little, almost like a termite, but they're not a termite, they're almost like in a family of it. They come in and they just burrow little tunnels all around through these potatoes everywhere and they just leave you with, a, with an ugly looking potato. You know, it just looks horrendous. Uh, we'll peel out and get what we can out of these. On my last porch time was a simple fact that size really doesn't matter, neither does quantity. Now we're not going to fret because of this because we still have our purple sweet potatoes to go and we still have a row of white sweet potatoes to go. Now I don't know if if the purple ones are rotting, I have no way of knowing unless I just go out there and just dig one up. But we only have like two small beds of them. And I really don't want to ruin the fact if they're doing good. Because there was only just a, just a two, two small beds of them. And we don't want to lose them if they're still growing. I can't afford to waste a plant. I've run my fingers down the ground around them and it feels like they're okay. But between these... The purple ones and the white ones, we're hoping to get a decent harvest, but, but guys, we were expecting around six to 700 pounds minimum this year. And what we ended up with was 300 pounds. By the time we figured what we picked out of our bottom field and now this top field, so far we're only at 300. Now if the purple ones pull out in these two beds and the white ones and they make enough to bring us up some, then that's one thing, but guys, this is why we plant as much as we do, because you have no control over the weather. You have no control over what mother nature does or the wildlife or anything like that. Uh, there was one point that the deer came in and eat one whole end of the field off down there. They ate all of them off before the grass and the rain actually come. We actually have video of my neighbor tilling that field for us when we were getting ready to plant sweet potatoes. You couldn't even see him on a tractor because it was so dusty. And we figured, oh my gosh, these things will never live. But we poked them in the ground and they flourished because there was enough moisture deep in the ground after we broke the ground up that they were able to get some moisture and they started taking off. And we thought, wow, we're going to actually be able to get some good potatoes because it, it started raining a little bit. But then came the fire ants. 
the fire ants began to build beds in that field everywhere. And then the rain just kept coming and the ants just trying to, kept trying to get up out of the ground, building more beds and more beds. And then the grass took over and the ants were building all up in the grass and there was just no way, guys. Then the rats moved into the grass and it was just beyond our control at that point. And so we just did what we could do, like we talked about on porch time last week. Sometimes you just have to do what you can do. Now, we're, you know, we keep these small ones like this. A lot of times we used to just feed these to the animals. But this year, we'll be taking these kind right here and we'll be washing them and cleaning them up good and we'll be quartering them up. And that's what we'll make our fries out of to eat, sweet potato fries. Now, we do have a small corner of the bucket over here. We picked up some of the little tiny roots and stuff like that. And that's going to go to the pigs because we don't waste anything. If we could see it in the field, we picked it up, threw it in the bucket, just simply because we don't feel like that it's right to just let stuff, if we know it's there, waste and be of no benefit to anything. So we tried our best to gather up everything we could just so we would benefit as much as we could from our labor. So guys, this is one of the things we wanted to bring y'all and show you that even though I grow sweet potatoes every year and they're fantastic, the weather this year has just been horrendous here. We've got rain up to two and three weeks at a time, nonstop. All these tropical systems are coming in here. Low pressures are forming off the Gulf down here. Water just keeps getting dumped day after day after day after day. And then the relentless humidity and the heat comes in. Uh, our heat indexes stay up in the 100 degrees most days, and it's, it's not always cracked up to be to try to be a homesteader and try to raise your own food. Now Wanda and I, thank God, had canned some sweet potatoes last year, and we still have a few left over to add to these this year because, guys, by the time we can 300 pounds of sweet potatoes and keep some fresh to eat, that's going to be pushing the limit about making it to next season and having to do without sweet potatoes. I know that uh, it's not always um, roses and everything. It, you know, it's not always good. But sometimes on a homestead, you have failures, and in our eyes, this is almost a failure. But we still have something to eat, so we're not going to look at it as a failure. We're going to look at it like God blessed us because it could have been worse. We could have lost all of it. But because God was good to us and let us get what we need right now to get this stuff preserved, we feel like we've been blessed. So don't get discouraged when you have these problems. And guys, let me say this. In the, couple, in the years to come, what you're seeing right here, it's just going to get worse because they're talking about different insects are now being found in our country in different locations in our country that have never been here before. There's insects killing timber. There's beetles in places in the United States killing the timber that's never been there before. The lots of the trees are dying from the tops down. Um, crops are dying. Uh, insects are just horrendous this year. The weather, there's flooding, there's drought. Lots of places in the country, they don't even know if they're going to have hay for their cattle because there's just been no season for growing anything. Lots of places in the country, the corn has just been lost. The wheat has been lost to flooding. Guys, this is only the beginning of sorrows. So when you see something like this and you have an opportunity to preserve and you have an opportunity to grow your stuff, I beg you, learn and get busy because it's only going to get worse in the upcoming years. So guys, I know this is not an upbeat video, but it's a positive video because we're giving God the thanks for giving us what we do have. Could have been worse. So keep a positive attitude and thank y'all from Deep South Homestead.